I've bought the wildest one-star reviewed phones across all of Amazon. Our investigation starts with this, the Not S22 Ultra. This is not made by Samsung and shipped directly from China. Still, it's a good looking phone based on the listing and a lot cheaper than the real S22. Great, I thought, and then I saw the reviews. What really worried me was Mr. Congian... Gon Con what really worried me was Mr. Congeniality's review. The most shocking part of his very detailed review was when I took it apart, it was a bunch of tape holding stuff together in there. Where there was supposed to be many screws to remove to get to the circuit boards, there were none. This looks like it was all glued in the chassis. Now, build quality like that is worrying, but intriguing and requires our investigation. Of course, there were also the expected reviews that this is a fake, nicely put by Scott, who says, purposefully misleading, not a Samsung product, one star. Or Rose, who can't figure out who made the phone and suspects it might be North Korean. Fancy box and all. High digital camera. Let's put this to the side for a sec. Quite a bit in here. The earphones have a 3.5mm jack, that means the phone probably has one too. World's lightest charging block. A case. And a charging cable. Okay, now the phone itself. Peel. And the back. HD screen. That's not very Samsung to me. It actually doesn't feel that bad in hand. I think the edges may actually be metal. Welcome. Well, I think we can confirm that it's not a real Samsung. <laughs> oh, they've copied the Samsung wallpapers though. Points for effort. Wait a sec, it hasn't made me go through the Android setup. That's worrying, there could be anything pre-installed on here. Well, I definitely won't be trusting it with any real accounts. It's meant to be Android 11, but I think it's lying about that. A fake phone lying about its operating system too. Who'd a thunk? Okay, done a little more exploring and discovered spelling mistakes in the settings. Error panel mode. You really can't make this stuff up. Also found a spec reading app which confirms that this is not on Android 11. It's on a skinned version of Android 5. And it doesn't have 4GB of RAM, just one. Now we've got a rumour to substantiate. We've got to see if the build quality really is as bad as Mr. Congeniality said. Is this held together on the inside by tape and glue? One way to find out. This was really hard to get into. The screen was very stubbornly glued on, and when I finally managed to rip it off, completely destroying it in the process, yes, my repairing skills could do with some work. I realised that I still needed the back off to access the components, and I was really shocked by this, but the back turned out to be made of glass. I had been sure it was plastic. Anyway, it shattered and required some clearing up. And gloves. But once I peeled off the rest, the inside really didn't look too bad, and it did require plenty of unscrewing. Frankly, there wasn't an undue amount of glue inside, and just a couple of bits of tape to hold down some of the ribbon cables for the screen. In all, for such a terribly specced fake device, I think the build quality was fairly impressive. Maybe I received a different device than Mr. Congeniality. Now, aside from its surprisingly reasonable build quality, this is, or rather was, still an appalling device. It's a fake, a fake Samsung, and on top of that, it lies to you about all of its specifications. So it's getting one star. Pinocchio's favorite phone. Fake, and the specs made his nose grow, but surprisingly okay build quality. Our next portable communications device, the Xgodi 13 Pro. A very sleek and modern looking phone, which seems to be quite popular with the buyers at first. So why then has it accumulated so many Lone Star reviews? Well, you see this phone has a ridiculous problem that just shouldn't happen, and it's actually pretty funny. I'll let Grace explain. 
one out of five stars, horrendously bad. Second time purchasing this phone, first time my son dropped his phone and the screen popped off, so I thought it was because of the phone being dropped. Second time he had it two days, never dropped it at all, just picked it up and the screen has popped off again. As you can hear she's had this phone screens pop off twice, but she certainly isn't the only one. Anastasia too. In fact almost every review on this phone was about the very same issue. You've got to wonder if they just forgot the gluing step because how much can a little glue cost for goodness sake? Anyway some tactile and very possibly percussive investigation is needed. What's this at the top? Oh a charger. And the box itself. This charger already feels a lot better than the last one. Xcody. Scoddy? Scoddy? Not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. This feels a lot more, well, less like a scam. The phone. Again, we'll come back to that in a moment. Screen protection case. Another screen protector, a glass one this time. It's almost like they're compensating for something. Nice little sim tool. Cable with adapter, actually could be quite useful this. Now the handset himself. Peel. Wow, this is a really good looking design. Some air bubbles in the pre-applied screen protector. That's three now. <laughs> Let's turn on. Wait, no Android setup again. What's going on with these? The screen is way better quality. It's not high resolution, but the viewing angles aren't bad at all on this. It's running on Android Go, a stripped down version of Android, and by all accounts this is quite a nice little, or not so little, phone for the price. Unlike the S22 Ultra, this one ain't pretending to be much fancier than it is. I've devised a test for this phone which will involve the very scientific methodology of dropping it, but a soft surface drop test onto this mat, because I don't want to smash the screen, I just want to see how easily it falls off. And we've got the shoe boxes to mark the height, at first from one shoe box height. Ready? Still attached. Okay, two shoe box heights. Still attached. Still attached. Two more to go. This is a full four shoe boxes. Still attached. And finally, if this stays on, then this phone is getting a five star review from me. Ready, steady, and. Well, maybe they finally remembered to add the glue to them because this is fine. You can see it's still attached not even slightly loose. It actually survived admirably. I really thought the screen would come off with the repeated abuse, but it survived our displaced aggression so far. I don't know that it's the very best phone you could get for 70 quid, at least performance wise. It's not snappy, but it's got a very pretty design which compensates and it's not terrible by any means, with its screen still attached. Five stars, good value, Excellent aesthetic design. Um, screen didn't fall off yet. Next we have the LG G2 and I think we've got to pause there already because those of you who remember the LG G2 will be thinking what? The G2 was a brilliant phone, one of LG's finest. It was a five star phone, not a one star phone. What is it doing on this list? Besides the battered box, which yes, that is how it was delivered. Well, Mrs. H gives it one star. Doesn't support apps. I bought this for my son. Being Android, I thought it would support the same apps that his tablet does, but it doesn't. Would probably be fine if you just wanted a cheap phone, but no good if you want to use the apps. 
which reminds me that it has now been more than 10 years since this phone was released. And that's a long time. Devices definitely do lose support over that sort of time. The question is how much? It looks like the box got in a fight on the way here. I should mention that this is the only one I bought from Amazon. Not new, but in used, very good condition. Don't even need a knife this time. Whoops, spoke too soon. They've included a free SIM card for some reason. Wow, this is some low effort packaging. But if it works, it works. What can I say? It's a little grubby and scuffed. Also, the screen doesn't seem to be clipped down completely flush here. I don't know if you can see that. Will it turn on? Looking good. Now the real question is, can this guy run anything? And um, this is actually really much worse than I'd expected. I've been through the Play Store trying to find the basics. YouTube's already on here, but won't work without an update, which it can no longer do. Instagram, when you can find it in the Play Store, not so simple. It just crashes the Play Store when you try to install it. And Chrome, surprisingly, is both on here and is somewhat functional, although it is also asking for an update, which cannot be done. This is running on Android KitKat 4.2, which is old, and even Google's own apps, many of which have got quite decent support, still require Android 7, at least, which this certainly never got to. But there is the silver lining for this, that unlike this iPad, both of which are similar age, really, with just a bit of know-how and a couple of hours, you could get this running a fairly modern version of Android, allowing it to run modern apps, and then you'd be left with quite a nice little device. Unfortunately, that doesn't change the review this guy deserves, because it's definitely not for most buyers. So, I just decided to try and demonstrate this Android upgrade. Me, who's just managed to completely destroy a phone trying to open it with a penknife, shattering the back and causing shards of glass to go everywhere, thought it would be a good idea to try a very finicky and difficult Android upgrade on a 10-year-old phone flashing a new operating system to it. Um, yep, I bricked it. <laughs> Mrs. H. Wright. It. Brick. Sad face. Finally, a phone from a company I've never heard. <clears throat> Finally, a phone from a company I'd never heard of before. TT phone. But to be honest, there was just one reason I bought this phone, and that was Kerry's review right here. One out of five stars. Money of waster waste? Waste waster? No, you haven't just had a stroke. This is the text. I thought it was another language when I saw it, maybe Turkish. I genuinely put it into Google Translate, which failed because, well, this is English. Kinda. If you like puzzles, I recommend pausing to try to figure out what it says now, because I'm about to spoil it by decrypting it. After a little while, I figured out that most of the words have their letters out of order, or more specifically, are split somewhere in the middle of the word, and have the end of the words put at the beginning. So this first word is rip-off, but it becomes off-rip. If that wasn't enough, it also reads from the end of the review to the beginning. Oh, and it has some extra letters and is missing some spaces for extra fun. <laughs> Here's my translation of the review. I'm very disappointed with this phone. It's, I could have go got one from Cash Converters or somewhere similar for the same price, but a lot better. I have to recharge it constantly and there is very little storage space on it. I highly recommend that you don't buy this item as it is a ripoff. So nothing that you would have expected to need encryption. I'm just confused how it ended up quite as jumbled as it did. Another free sim. Very slick box here.
Oh, this is more professional looking than I was expecting. And a removable battery. This thing is growing on me. <laughs> Not much in here. Very cheap feel. Peel. Let's pop that in. I don't even remember the last time I had to go through the putting in the battery step of starting a new phone. I don't know what to say about this phone, guys. This is a poor, poor phone. It would have been a bad phone in 2013 when the LG was released, but it was released in 2021. It's just an absolute relic with its tiny plastic screen and one single gigabyte of RAM. Just don't buy it in case there was anybody who was planning to. <laughs> Anyway, the last thing to do is let's go to Cashies and see if they could beat this at the £50 mark. Well, their selection wasn't great to be honest. I've got a bit used to online prices. The phones they had actually priced at 50 were pretty ancient. But provided you're willing to take some knocks and dinks, you could definitely squeeze a little more performance from your 50 quid, especially as they said they'd negotiate on some of these slightly more expensive ones. The shop assistant thought they could probably do this Redmi Note 3 for our price, despite it being listed at 70. The truth is, the pickings are a bit slim at 50 quid, both online and in cash converters, and you can get a vastly better phone if you're willing to spend just 20 odd quid more. Finally, my review. I thought it was vitally important to provide a translation of Kerry's review. If you'd shown this to Alexander Graham Bell, he'd have changed careers. Thank you for watching! If you don't like and subscribe, I may send you this phone. Consider yourself warned.